welcome to the Boo Podcast. Hey, hey, hey. Hello. That's I'm Teresha. <laughs> Teresha didn't know what else to do. <laughs> welcome to the Boo Podcast. <laughs> yo, 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 what's up, everybody? It's your boy TK coming to you live. Oh, coming to it's you live. So we got Princess, we got Princess. Mila, Jerisha, your boy TK, TK, Jerry Cash, Cardinal Roman. <laughs> Y'all doing good? Yeah. yeah. So our our monthly leaders meeting consists of us eating some bomb Mexican food. Yeah. Then we come in here and we talk. Uh, today we're going to talk about negativity. Mm. So we had a question from our team. So regularly we put out, uh, we do a Q&A. And they, one of the teens submitted a question, which I'm trying to find right here. They put a, they put some weird da, questions, da, if y'all remember. Da, da, so this... Da, 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 <laughs> yeah, see? <laughs> All right, so now that I found it, this question is, why is it so hard to let go of negativity in my life, and how can I make it easier for myself to get rid of the negativity? I try to eat. Go. Mm. What was that? <laughs> what was the first part of the question? Can you read one more time? Why is it so hard to let go of negativity in my life? And how can I make it easier for myself to get rid of the negativity? Mm. I feel like one of the first steps of letting go of, neg- of negativity is forgiveness. Forgiving Ooh. whoever uh, whoever did you wrong. Or, you know, yeah. Yeah. even that, that might be the hardest part for you, actually forgiving. I feel like that's a good first step to start out. Forgive that person. Mm-hmm. And then you'll be, feel better about it yourself and you'll be able to let go of that negativity. It's really good. Nice. All right, Jerry Cash, yeah. come out. Power. I think we're done with this question now. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was good. That was but how do you? Answer. What is the, the second part? Says next part says, I, and how can I make it, it easier for myself to get rid of the negativity? So it's just about, I just about filling in what you're letting go. Like if you're letting go of negativity, fill it in with positivity. Yeah, you know, uh, I think negativity you can relate that to attitude. Attitude is the uh, the aroma of your heart. So what is there in your heart? Um, you know, it shows in your attitude. So negativity, positivity, same things in your heart. That's what I feel. So, music, food, <laughs> workout. Ooh. Aren't those idols? Workout. All yeah. those things. Dude. Ah, I just yeah. did it. All those things. Yeah. I would say changing your mindset. So like renewing your mindset. So like TK said, um, fill your like. So try to surround yourself with positive things. So like uh, with the things you watch, with the things you listen to, with the people you hang around, if they're not bringing anything positive, if they're not bringing any positive influence into your life, then you you have to let them go. That's that's good. Let them go. Let them go. Well, the Bible also talks about holding every thought captive. And what I like to think about that, so in Proverbs it says, um, hold every thought captive and bring it before the throne of God. What I like to think when it comes to negativity with that is kind of like, this isn't this isn't really our fight to pick. It's God's fight. This is the mind battle, and that's what mind battles are about. So, um, like, you, you have to understand the authority that you have as a believer, like, because of Jesus, through Jesus. And because you have that authority, you can actually like hold captive your thoughts and just go before God and say, God, here you go. This is what's going on in my mind, you know, and give it on to him. But that surrender so many times we try to do all these mundane things to like control it and control it and control it when really we just need to take authority. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it's really good. I like that because I mean, like know that know that you have power, like. You have power. a lot of power. Yeah. You don't, yes. That stuff don't have to be in your life. You don't want right. You got more exactly. power than the devil. Yes, that's you right. got more that's power right. than a devil. Big facts. You better say it. Like, that's for real. That's a real If story. you're watching this right now, I want you to say, I got more power than the devil. I got, I more, got power. more power than the devil. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, we can say it too. It, you can say I it. got more power than the devil. Yeah. That's real. Sometimes we need to speak that Sometimes over ourselves. Sometimes you need to say yes. it until you believe it, too. I don't know about you all, but that mirror isn't just for looking at yourself and seeing how Come you on. look. Sometimes you got to start true. to preach to yourself. Word of affirmation. Say, I got more power than the devil. Today's going to be great. Yep. I am more than a conqueror yep. through Christ Jesus. You know what? Sometimes the devil ain't the biggest person in your life. It's, your, it's yourself. So you're, mm. looking at, you're looking at that mirror and say, I got more power than you. 
You know, it's me, but still, like I said, I got my priority. Because <laughs> it's the flesh. I mean, yeah, yeah. it's the flesh of the old man. You look at Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, now. I got my yeah, priority. Definitely. You definitely. for real lost me there for a second, oh, but. You're talking about leveling I'm, I'm up. I'm that kind. I'm that kind. It's all, about getting, it's all about being really deep, you know what I'm saying? Like, That's <laughs> good. Anyone else? Negativity? I think. Uh, a lot of good stuff was saying about like cutting it off. Sometimes you just gotta dig deep to find out what that negativity is. It's a source. Because some people just get involved with stuff and they don't even realize that they're in a negative situation. Yeah. And it's kind of like oblivious to them. So that goes to say a lot of times what we talk about having accountability, having people in your life that can ask you hard questions, that can speak in your life and say no or say yes or say hey, you may want to reconsider. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes I know personally I've gotten to situations where I thought I was like I thought I was on the narrow road I'm like oh hey I'm doing this and then someone just said ah, you're just being kind of religious I was like uh. man that's true yeah. <laughs> alright let's go drink some alcohol not just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so sure. yeah, you can't take capital of that thought if you don't know what it is that's it's true right. yeah. blind yeah. spots Pastor Joe talks a lot about blind, blind spots, spots. That's, yeah. that's why you need other people because it's a blind spot because you can't see it so when you got other people in your life that are keeping you accountable mentors in your life that are telling you stuff making sure you're on the right track iron sharp as iron. making sure that negativity is not weighing you down so i mean it's kind of like the it's kind of like the thing with the that i don't know if it's an analogy or if someone really did they probably did when they put a, a frog to boil like they put the frog in with a uh, water temperature that they're used to it's if you do that if huh? it if you try to boil a frog and the water is already boiling and you throw it in he'll jump out but if you're going to boil a frog, you need to put the put him in when the water's cold. And then it starts to boil and he just stays there chilling. Like, just put a lid on Like it. he's in a little sauna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's like progressively, I think that's to say like that's progressively negativity may not be like a big old hot boiling water negativity. It may be like a little gradual stuff. And that's why it's good to have blind spot people to help you with your blind spots and yeah. mentors to talk to you about sure. what you're doing. And always be in learning, too. Like, always be a student. Yeah. You know what I mean? Some of you guys just, like, he just came out of high school, the most recent, right? Some of y'all may be doing school. I'm not sure. I wanted to go back, but <laughs> always be a student. I think that the most successful people are those that are students. So if you're not stagnant, you're. I think the negativity is going to, it can't hang on if you're moving too fast for it. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. But what can? Y'all got anything else to add? You want to try to knock out another teen question? Yeah. They got a bunch, y'all. Go the ahead. last one was like Slide it a up. lot. Oh, actually, let's... Uh, we love let's doing see. Q&A with I don't know if we really teams. covered that question yeah. completely. And how can I make it easier for myself to get rid of it? Yes, I think we covered it, right? We covered. In the name of Jesus. We covered. How? All right, here we go. This is a tough one. Jesus gives everybody free will, but why does he still let innocent lives get murdered? Oh, I remember that. You already question. messed up on that on that whole question. Uh, he said he let innocent minds get murdered. Like he's not letting that happen. It's just you gotta understand his wills. There's three types of wills. See, if you read the Bible, no, I'm just kidding. I won't fuss at you like that. Go ahead. But I mean, if you really want to know these things, those things like that, you, you have to study the Word of God because the enemy can mess up your mind. Like he can mess with you, but like you see there, yeah, God don't care about you because right. he's just gonna. If you I don't care if you are innocent, he just gonna throw you to hell in for in, 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 you know in a way. He gonna throw you in hell. But like, no, that's not true at all you know it's you have to understand the will of god we don't know what that person is going through we don't know how many people we don't even know if they are innocent we don't know that god knows their lives and sometimes it's, it's best it's a lot of times it's sometimes they struggle so much that you know let like the last man like okay i'm gonna tell you a story let me just tell you a story to better explain this okay we had a friend of ours who um back in louisiana and she had just got to the church and she was crippled and she didn't believe in God. So, um, what ended up happening was during service, uh, she got prayed for and she got healed. She stood the entire service. The next week, she died. And it's like, this person was innocent. This person didn't know anything about life. She didn't know anything about God like that. But the last minute, she found God and boom, God took her away. That's the same reason why people, that's, that, that's, that's, that falls under the same thing of innocent people 
That's mine. Oh, okay. A lot of the innocent people losing their lives, they may they they may get to know God. They may some God may speak to them. They may bleed. They may uh, ask for forgiveness. They may find it. We don't know if you know if they were innocent, as in if they just die, die without knowing God. They may have known God. They may have gotten the chance, and we didn't know that. And all we just all we see is they're innocent and they're dying. But they could be in a place of you know happiness and joy and peace and rest. What they died an innocent life, you know, we don't understand that. But that's something we can't always understand because God is so huge and so vast, and His will is so mighty. <clears throat> we can't always understand it, but we understand. We can't understand His wills, though. One that one His will being that whatever He wishes, whatever He pleases, He does. Whatever He says is decreed. The will of decree. Whatever He says and goes, it goes. It happens. Like if a storm is going to happen, a storm is going to happen. We can't pray and change that. Uh, the other will is that. Uh, for us to follow, uh, to follow uh, us to follow, his, you know, his will, like uh, restrain from sexual immorality, those things like that. That's you know, uh, God, Jesus said that uh, all. The, um, and he said in Matthew's that um, not everybody will enter the, uh, not everybody will make it. Pretty much, he said that you know, there's gonna people come to me saying, Lord, did I not do this and this and this and that in your name? But he said he's gonna say, you know, away with you, away with, away with you. You know, you evil doers, because those people didn't do the will of God. And what was the will of God was to restrain, uh, restrain from sexual morality. You know, to follow the commands of Jesus. That was that will of God. And then there's the other will of God, where Jesus is in the he's in a garden and he's he's saying, God, man, just please take this cup away from me. I don't want to be. I don't want this to happen to me. Is there gotta be another way? But he said at the end that, nevertheless, your will be done. And it's like we don't understand why we may not get why it's happening, but it's happening for a reason. And it's just. The will of God So it's not That he's sitting there like Oh this person He's innocent eh, Kill him Next No it's not like that It's not a, It's not that at all It's just the cir Circum situations And what we What we perceive of them That make Make us think That it's innocent Or make us think about it But it's not Just trust me Read and study the Bible And get deeper in that And so you can have your answers Because you don't want to be Caught off guard By Satan When he starts throwing stuff In your In your life And it's, it's happened to me It's happened to my friends You know I, I've not understood things And I was a guy Like God Just I, I'm, I'm lost I'm not, I don't know Why this doesn't make sense to me Why people are doing this But then He started having me Read his word more And I started to hear him Hear him through his word And he started to explain things to me maybe Having better understanding And research You can research You don't have to be Asking questions To uh, To uh, about everything by yourself You can research You can ask There's there's all leaders here We got people uh, Who's done deeper research Than we have on Into this Who have Who breaks down scriptures For you Even you can understand All that is available That's how I came to understand it I, I researched I dig I dug deep into it I found people Who pulled scripture From scripture And explained it Exactly how it is In the bible From the greek From the original version From the original To the original Of the original Of the original version So I mean You can find these answers uh, But if you ever get stumped and you can't find Understand that You know Prayer and seeking God and face and he, He'll make things clear for you and That's all I gotta say Anybody else on it? Mic drop Well when it comes to The will of God And evil things That happen in the world They're absolutely Not a part of the will of God The The good and perfect Will of God is That he abides in us and that we abide in him that we walk with him in the cool of the day we got to go back to creation from the very beginning that was the will of god everything that happened since then uh that brought evil into the world that's because of free will yes and because of free will the earth that was in perfect synchrony became a dying and falling place because yes. of the choices made within free will and it's kind of the same like it, it, in our lives. And we have to remember that this is a dying world. And the outcome of, of life is not this world itself, but eternity. And so when it comes to like evil things happening, it's absolutely not the will of God. But God will not break his own rules. Mm -hmm. He set rules in place and... Because of those rules that he set in place, you got to study creation to like fully go deep in this. But he set rules in place, and the earth was in perfect synchrony. And when that changed, when when sin came in, everything kind of fell apart. And now the world is not no longer that perfect place. And now bad things happen, not because of God, but because of sin in the world. 
God is good and he's always good and that never changes. I don't care what happens. Like and I can say this today without a shadow of a doubt and today was today is the 5th birthday of my little sister who passed away 3 years ago. Like a little over 3 years ago. And she's not here. We're not celebrating her, you know, because she she passed away in in an an accident. And I can say without a shadow of a doubt that that's not God's will. Like, it's not God's will for people, little kids to die, for innocent people to die. But the world we live in is not the original perfect will of God. Make sense? It's it's a world that has rules that were set, that were broken, and therefore the world is dying. Nonetheless, this is not my place. Eternity is. And that's where our, our focus needs to be. Yeah, don't, don't equate Amen. a man's curse God's judgment. Like don't, let's do it different. I think it's a good place to be to to think stuff like that because yeah. that that keeps your mind on eternity and not necessarily here. Because yeah. there is a there's a uh, <coughs> being born and then there is death, yeah. and God is so much bigger than anything we could comprehend or imagine. Mm-hmm. Like we try to, but it's probably such a small percent. Yeah. Like even talking about percentages of God's greatness, yeah. right. it's, it's all we got because we're humans. Yeah. And God is, he is not, he's so much further out and so much more crazy or big than we could ever even imagine or think of that that's really the place that we could question, like, why does he allow that to happen? And it's a lot like what Mila's saying. I believe that sin is part of it. Free will is part of it. And it just goes back to like, God is a good father. God is good. He's a good father. He doesn't want, he doesn't want his children to die. He doesn't want his children to suffer. But at the same time, it happens because we live in flesh and we are humans. In a dying world. In a dying world, yeah. A lot of like I think a lot of stuff too with like related to death as well is like people may believe stuff that's different. Some people may believe this, some people may believe that. But honestly, search it out for yourself to find out what you believe, find out what yeah. the Bible says, find out what other people you believe in say. Do your research. And I think that's yeah. a good place to be. Like I talked to Question some people about things, yeah. they had friends and I was like, I was telling them I'm a Christian, I'm a pastor, and they're like man, my, my sister is actually a uh, pagan. She had a pagan wedding and like this and that. And they're kind of talking down. And I was like, I think that's a good place to be. Like not necessarily that, that your current situation of being pagan is a good place, but you're searching out truth pagan. in some way that you're at the point of labeling yourself that. Right. And honestly, like I can say, God is real. Gerald, God is real. But unless he knows it for himself, and searches it out himself. Yeah. Right. He's not going to know the real God that I know unless right. he experiences it himself. True. What do they mean by like she's pagan? I guess some form of belief that is more humanistic, like humanism. Oh, she's humanism. Okay. Like celebrating Christmas. Well, because that's a, that's that's exactly like close Putting to my point. Putting a Christmas point. tree up. Because. In Bible terms, pagans were those who followed Jesus. They just, they just In Bible times, things. pagans were those who followed Jesus. But yet, we as Christians so often say, oh, they're pagan. Oh, this is pagan. That's pagan. Excuse me, you were pagan before they were. Let because you believe in Jesus, first of all. And if you really want to go ahead and remove everything that's pagan from your life, don't wear a wedding band. Don't put flowers on your wedding. Don't have a ceremony. Don't have a ceremony. Yeah, exactly. If you if you don't really allow women think, to speak in church. <laughs> <laughs> if you really think he like so hard at that. that. If you for I'm real think too. that like oh I can't I can't celebrate this because it's pagan. I can't celebrate that because it's pagan. No 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 no. Don't celebrate your wedding because that's pagan. Yeah. It started. Your birthday. It. I was gonna say that. Okay, wedding celebration started as a uh, uh, an offering. To the goddess Aphrodite, and that's why weddings have so many flowers in them because flowers were her offering, we and so that was like the call for no passion ways. in the wedding. Oh, and and so <laughs> I hear so many people that are married and have have kids. Like I feel like 
a lot of times, you know, you might even hear this from your parents, like, oh, I don't know about celebrating Christmas, putting up the Christmas tree or doing this or doing that because it's pagan. And you're like, wait, it, I've always questioned, like, wait a minute. Jesus and his disciples were called pagans, you know? So, I've heard that from what does that even mean? Like, you got to study history parallel to Bible terms and to Bible times, and you'll, you'll see that that was paganism because paganism really is different than the common belief. And the common belief, yeah. you were either Roman or you were. Hey, uh, being Roman's good now. <laughs> <laughs> or you were Jewish. Yeah, so, even, uh, even, for the most part. Even Christmas, uh, I did a lot of digging to it myself. Can you talk in your mic? Oh, I just talking in the background, but you know what? Now we get on the mic. Hey, it's your boy TK coming to you live. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but even Christmas, um, I found out I'm gonna go into it because there's a whole lot. You really need to do a lot of digging in yourself. We're going down but, the trail. Yeah, you're gonna go <laughs> true. You know, I'm just gonna say that it's it's different from what you think it is. It's not. It's not like it. It was. It was. It was. Um. Oh my God! It was that emperor, whatever his name was, who changed stuff and made it bad but i made it more uh but jesus wasn't born in december that's for sure true but that's not that, that's it that's the part there. that's the part where <laughs> that's the part where he stepped in it was the emperor whatever his name was i can't remember his name he he made that happen and he said all the stuff but the original meaning was you know there was this guy i've got his name was uh saint patrick and he was real and he did go and give Thanks to the poor, but that's you what call it was. Them saint. You're Man. a pagan. Oh my gosh! So he, he <laughs> <laughs> you said Saint Patrick. Yeah, that's that was a yeah. He was a real man. A Bishop Patrick is you know Saint Patrick. He was a real man. He did Not go out Saint there. Saint Nicholas. Saint, Saint Nicholas. Nicholas. That's what I'm gonna say. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not thinking about Patrick. It sounds like Saint Patrick. You know what? Saint Saint Patrick, Patrick, you're thinking of. Yeah. I'm thinking about Saint Patrick. You're all the way in Ireland. What is that? Uh, that's that's something. That's the green. That's the yeah. the, the, the luck kind of thing. Yeah. Whatever. Y'all yeah. basically need to do your yeah. own research. I, yeah, do your own research. Go deeper. I got the but that's why we're here for too. So yeah, All right. So I got another. I got another left field question. Uh oh. Left. So we had a situation at the men's retreat that one of the teens were there and they saw that one of the men had a jewel. Y'all know a jewel? A jewel? Like a little uh, uh, yeah. vape. Yeah, like a oh. like an e like, Who here has a jewel? Isn't that wrong? Oh. Oh. <laughs> no, I don't. No names, no names. This a situation happened. Y'all, come on, yeah. This a situation happened. They said, isn't that wrong? And I began to talk to them a little about, about convictions. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. I said, first of all, unspoken name. <laughs> first of all, everyone's convictions are different because I have stronger convictions than some people. Some people have stronger convictions than me. Right. Second of all, it's the Holy Spirit's duty and responsibility or the way it does to convict us. Yeah. I can yeah. tell you something and say something, <clears throat> but unless you actually receive what I'm saying, you're probably not going to be convicted. And I said, third of all, yeah, well, I did. I hit him with the third of all. When you have people in your life that are able to speak in your life and tell you no they could be the holy spirit for the holy spirit that you're blocking out yeah that's so true. when they tell you something and say no and you're not hearing from the holy spirit convicting you sometimes you just got to be obedient and not be on the jewel or whatever i think it's all related i think i first told him like he was like isn't it bad to be on a jewel like is it bad to have food as an idol above loving god isn't it bad to play video games more than you spend time with god and, he, and they were just like Oh, it was, it was a dude because it was a manager tree. He was just like, <laughs> <laughs> what do y'all think about that? What do y'all think about convictions like that? Like, what was y'all's process through being convicted of, I don't know, oh, gosh. whatever? Listen. I mean. uh, we're listening. <laughs> like, like, like Vila said earlier, like the Holy Spirit will convict you like God as far as like uh, drinking and stuff. Like God was just like. My gun chin. Like what? Thank you. <laughs> talking to Mike. Yeah, like, well, like, like, like drinking, even like socially or casually. Like, at a certain point in my life, God just told me, spoke to me, you know, and said, you know, do you want to be a representation of me? Do you want to re represent me in all places that you are, in all places that you go? And so, you know, kind of like what what Pastor tells us is, you know, you're good being spoken bad of, or yeah, you're good being spoken bad of. So that I just cut it out, instantly cut it out. It was. God and the Holy Spirit convicting me of that. It was nobody else saying, "Oh, you shouldn't do this," you know. Because at the end of the day, we're going to do what we want to do, yep. you mm. know. Yep. But when the Holy Spirit comes in and tells us, it transforms our thinking. You're still going to hey. do what you're going to do, but you know, it transforms. Come our on thinking, now, it preacher. Transforms our mind, and then our spirit 
is renewed, like what Princess said earlier. So, yeah. That's good. Mm-hmm. How did the Holy Spirit tell you? Uh, how, how did how? he? Uh, well, a certain cir- circumstance happened, um, and it was very important to me, and I missed it because of that. So, um, I was just like, yeah, no, okay. And it, I mean, it was just socially, but like, yeah, I was like, no, I'm cutting it out. It's done. No more. All right. Yeah. Good. But like, I was like, you know, what was more important to you, and where were your priorities? And I was like, wow, my priorities were all messed up. So, that got me. <laughs> I think even a way of of talking too, like we're at Faith Culture Church. Yeah, we got our pastor is big on words, like huge on words. So it's like the way you talk. Personally, sometimes I felt the Holy Spirit convicting me, and then sometimes I just had to be obedient because it wasn't even like it wasn't anyone telling me like stop doing this. It was like this is what we do, right? And I just had to be obedient, be like, all right, I gotta I gotta fall in line, or else I'm gonna fall off. I guess you know so. We understand this too, that we are under authority and for us to flow in the authority that they have given us and the anointing Anointing. that the church carries and our pastors carry, we have to be submitted to their vision and what they say or else we can flow in our own, but we're not flowing in synchrony and in their anointing. Then right. come on, for Pastor us to Mila. have that authority to flow mm. in their anointing, we have to be doing things like they do. If that's <laughs> not money, it. don't throw it on me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing a tissue so, fan at you. Anyway. <laughs> if that's so, not money, don't throw it on me. That sounds like a rap lyric. <laughs> <laughs> we don't we cut that part off. Put that in there. <laughs> 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 anyway so then um i was talking to someone about this recently how like we are under authority and we don't do anything outside of that authority we try not to yeah we, tr- we try our <laughs> best god knows our heart we're, we're not perfect right. obviously but our pastors know it. our pastors know we, we're submitted to them and in in every way there are things that they live and they believe in and they preach that it's not personal convictions of ours but we got no room for that. The moment that we said, yes, we will serve under your vision. Mm-hmm. We relinquish that in our lives, you know, because we are under authority. Now, there are some names of some of some preachers, some scholars, some pastors that are drinkers. And if I tell you their names, you'd recognize them as people who you receive from. Who you, you whenever you're studying, you look at what these people are saying you would recognize those names, but nonetheless, that's not the flow in our house. And right. because that's not the that's flow not our in our culture. house, that's not, not our culture. Our culture. Yeah. We don't Faith, flow in culture, that. Church, round, round, we don't church. flow in that because that's, you know, that's the authority that we are under. Right. So all that to say to the pastors and churches that do drink, there is a grace on that, I think, in their level of servanthood. And to pastors and churches who don't drink at all, there is a grace and a level of servanthood in that. You know, our challenge for this week: look up the scripture. The gifts are irrevocable. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of that is related as well, Mm -hmm. because the Bible even talks about like what he was talking about, where they get to heaven and they're like, "Lord, I did all this stuff for you. You did all these works in your name." And he's like, "Depart from me! Depart from me! I didn't know you." So those gifts are are irrevocable. If you don't know what that word is, look it up. That's your homework, your challenge. I think overall, go deeper and walk and study and talk with God. Like it's very important, especially as we get, especially as we get deeper into the times. You know, like, (laughs) like we made this earlier. This world is going down, dying, dying. It's it's dying and. Eventually, you're going to understand that God is coming back. It's a good thing, not a bad thing. He is coming back, and a lot of things. If you're scared of that, you better get your life right. You're still trying to live some stuff that you shouldn't be living. If you're afraid of that, yeah, yeah. If you're afraid of God's return, like of Christ coming back, (laughs) just detach yourself from the world. Some people believe that we already live post, like. Po- no, post tribulation is oh, different, really? right? Pre trib, really? Pre trib, post trib, but it's not specifically Christ's return. Like some people think that we are in the tribulation. We are so. in the tribulation. Oh, yeah. Some people think that oh, yeah, that cool. we're post trib. So it's kind of like if they think we're in the tribulation. They probably didn't really read the Bible. Yeah, kind of okay, so there's stuff. this whole thing about like Christ coming back and then leaving, taking the saints and leaving some people. 
and then coming back again for those people and for the final battle. And some people think we're in that phase of Christ left with the saints. Oh. Hey, yo, and we're so, the ones that stayed. Uh, <laughs> this happened today at church during pre-service for meeting. Real? One of the people that I know like loves the Lord and they're on fire for the Lord that weren't there. And I was like, man, did I miss the rapture? Because they're super sanctified. Wow. <laughs> oh, like, oh, yeah, they're just outside. Okay. Oh, okay. He's literally <laughs> there one second. I look back and I was like, where'd it go? Yeah, they disappeared. <laughs> where'd it go? Wow. <laughs> we're like, that didn't rapture that, did Didn't that. you say that happened to you once when you were little? <laughs> huh? Were you the one who said that happened to you once when About you were little? About the rapture happening? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You thought. That always happened to me. That always happened to you. I always had to run around and like find my dad. Like, oh, he's still. Oh, we, grew up in, we grew up with what's that movie called? Left Behind. Left Behind. I never we watched grew up that movie. I just always felt season. like I was. Scared the mess out of me. Oh, yeah, oh, Lord. that's scary. I've not seen that was scary. Oh, yeah, I haven't seen it either. Okay, I'll say this: if you're scared of the end times and all of that, look up Mike Bickle's studies of the end times. Mike Bickle is founder of IHOP, right? Really? Yes, he has International dedicated House oh, International prayer. House of Prayer. Yeah, that's not pancake. Why are you trying to eat? Really, it's 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 we just ate. <laughs> no, International House of Prayer, Mike Bickle. If you're scared, even teens, like if you're scared of the end times, read this man's studies because he has dedicated decades of studying this. And first of all, I'll just leave you guys with this that he says, like, the Bible talks more about Jesus and God's people's victory over tribulation and all that's coming in the end times than anything else. So if anything, if you're scared, it's because you don't know the victory that awaits you. Mm -hmm. None of that is for you. None of the mess that's going to happen is for you. So if you're scared, you, you got you to gotta set your beliefs straight. <laughs> Why, well, man? I think we can. Yeah. I think we're done. I think we can end on that. Y'all be looking out. <laughs> Why did you just hit yourself? Yeah, why'd you slap your head that like was that? really loud. Drew slapped himself too. It was, it was going all all over the camera. He slapped his head real loud, all like, over the mic. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, 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 oh. She did it this time. <laughs> Anyways, it didn't fall. We got a we got a rap single coming out. The 13th. Yeah. If you connect with us, you find money, out. Don't it's your boy Jay Cash. We, say that. <laughs> we got shirts. If you if are watching money, somewhere in the U.S., we can me. ship the shirt if out to you. Money, it's our A T shirts. We have a lock in coming up. Lock in. We got YFN coming up. YFN. Stay tuned. Love. If you like the content, share with someone. Share. Tag someone. Subscribe. If you have any questions, let us know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask yeah. the move yeah. hashtag. And we'll Hashtag answer your questions. Who wants to pray us out? Not Jerisha. She did Not last time. Okay. Princess is about to pray y'all out. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Get ready. All right, um, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this fellowship time. Lord, we thank you for just being present in our lives today. Lord, we just ask that you continue to renew our minds, Father God. Continue to adapt our way, our thoughts to your thoughts. Lord, I ask that um, through the way of streaming, Lord, that you'll touch everyone's lives that um, listen to this. Lord, we ask that you be with them, that you bring peace of mind to them, that you bring knowledge to them and wisdom to them Lord so that they can know your truth they can know your way and that they can live the life that you want them to live Father God we thank you for this day in Jesus name Amen, Amen. Peace out everyone